Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the Elliott Elite U.S. Market Update. Let's get caught up on the uh, markets here uh, for the end of last week and the beginning of this week. We continue the basing pattern. As you can see, we've gone over the scenarios for the testing and uh, this low that occurred here on the 2nd of April could be uh, the testing low. Uh, we also have a lot of volatility. You can see the size of these bars, lots of intraday moves, and that's keeping the volatility higher in the market, which is exactly what we want as option traders. We are an important point of resistance uh, at the moment here. And as you can see with uh, where we traded, especially at the end of the day uh, on Tuesday, right up to that level. If we are able to break above that level, we should be able to run up to this recent high fairly quickly. And the reason for that is on the way down, uh, it was a fairly straight move down. So there's little resistance to get back to that high. We've got a couple little gaps there to get filled that we've talked about. And we also have a bit of a ascending triangle here which you uh, know uh, by now if you've been listening to these updates is a, a corrective pattern within Elliott Wave. So a very important next couple of days uh, to see how the markets handle this. We are getting towards earnings season finally. Could that be the catalyst to move things to the upside? May very well be. Um, the issue is uh, in my opinion if you have any cause of concern it's because earnings are expected to be pretty good. So if there's any sort of disappointments in the earnings, then that could send things right back down to the lows. But uh, I think the uh, expectations are we will see good earnings and that could be the breakout move. But we don't go on assumptions. We go on what the charts are telling us. The charts are telling us, <clears throat> pardon me, based on this little triangle here, uh, that we could likely have uh, a breakout uh, in the not too distant future. We have a little room here into the point if we wanted to consolidate a bit more, but we should have a breakout. It doesn't mean the breakout's going to be to the upside though. We could break lower again from here and it's going to be the earnings I believe that are the catalyst unless some other uh, geopolitical event comes out uh, that uh, uh, overshadows the earnings. So that would have to be something pretty major. Uh, notice the volume is still above average but drying up a little bit and that kind of coincides with uh, uh, consolidation as well. So it's interesting that we still have the intraday volatility but on a bit lower volume. So be interesting to see how things break out from there. Looking at the VIX, notice that we have a little bit of a triangle here and these kind of go hand in hand. A little bit of an ascending triangle in the market and that would coincide with a little bit of a descending triangle in the VIX. Both of us though showing that a breakout is on the horizon and we could come right back down. We could break out and come down to this lows which uh, we believe is going to be the new support level for the VIX. It has been uh, for recent times and we'll see if that uh, continues to hold again. That's what we believe and what we would like to have occurring for uh, uh, our option trading prowess. But uh, we could break to the upside uh, just as well. So we could have an upside breakout in the VIX and a downside breakout in the market or vice versa. Either is going to uh, happen or either could happen, but uh, one of the two is very likely to happen. These triangle patterns, when they form, we break out. They move. They do move. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer than we would like, but they eventually do break out. Almost, you, know, you hate to use these types of, types of terms in the world of trading, but almost never uh, does a triangle pattern not break out. I wanted to show you another chart of the dollar because it's surprising uh, how we are heading back down uh, with the dollar. And a decent market day today, you would have expected uh, moving back to the upside in the dollar. But I hate to bring this up as well, but it almost feels like there's some sort of conspiracy type of stuff going on with the dollar as far as how it's being able to stay. I shouldn't say conspiracy. I should say manipulation uh, is a better term. That's what I was really uh, intending to say. Uh, due to the fact that we just can't seem to get any traction on moving the dollar back to the upside unless that's port portraying that hey you know the economy's not as good as we think it is uh, earnings are not going to be as good as expectations uh, is that a signal uh, we'll find out pretty soon because again earnings start at the end of this week 
looking at TNX for interest rates. They're uh, holding in there and a little bit better form triangle here. Again, not a great one uh, because there's not a lot of bars there on that downward trend line, but uh, a pretty good upward trend line for the higher lows. <coughs> Pardon me. So again, I do think we're going to get a bit of a uh, breakout here from uh, interest rates uh, in the not too distant future. So we are getting uh, confirmation at least on the fact that we have consolidation patterns all over the place. These triangles uh, with the market, uh, with the VIX, uh, with the dollar uh, kind of going sideways, but with interest rates, uh, we have one uh, as well. Chevron breaking to the upside. We talked about this uh, flat pattern and how don't tend to trade flats. However, it's important to learn all aspects of Elliott Wave. Well, so we want to educate you on every piece of Elliott Wave. And as I've said numerous times, there's no better tool for that than uh, Integrated Investor or Profit Source. They're the best out there by far. And here was our flat pattern. Came back down towards those lows. And then we we're breaking to the upside. And that uh, newest of our case study trades is doing extremely well. And if we can break out from here, then uh, we could be off to the races. Uh, I wanted to show you a chart uh, after uh, looking at this of the XLE, which is an ETF for uh, the energy sector. And it'll show you that it is uh, also consolidating. And look at that breakout, even a larger breakout than just in Chevron itself. So finally, it looks like uh, the energy sector wants to come to the party, which is not participated uh, for this entire year, as you can see. I also wanted to show you one other chart here, uh, something that we're watching very closely uh, for another uh, uh, case study uh, position here is on BABA. And you might look at this and say, hey, there's a zigzag pattern right there. And it does at first blush look at one, but again, with the power of the Fibonacci tools that we have at our disposal, uh, we can take a look quickly and see that by putting on the Fib Retracement tool. Let me take off these other trend lines so that we can see this just a little bit clearer. Look, we came right down to the 78.6% level. And remember, that nullifies the zigzag. So 78.6%, we touched the line. As I've mentioned over and over again, you need to hit these lines for it to count. And it did. And then let's look at the Fib Extension tool and see how far we extended. And you can see that we would have gone up to 100% from there, but that's not where we trade from. We trade from the 61.8. So we would not have gone up and reached our target. We would have had a failed C wave on the zigzag pattern because you only trade zigzags with the 61.8% correction. 78.6% nullifies it. It cancels out the zigzag pattern and it shows that it would not have been one that reached its target. It still moved to the upside. It still would have been a nice gain had you gone in at 61.8%, but the pattern didn't fulfill itself. And I prefer to look for um, situations where we're going to get uh, a fulfillment in the pattern, especially if we're using an out of the money butterfly, or whatever. It, uh, it's the difference between a smaller amount of profit and a very large potential profit in a position. Now let me get this stuff off and then we'll also note that we had a jump up today uh, on BABA, uh, a gap up, so maybe that'll get filled rather quickly. And then we also have a gap higher here. Really like the looks of how this chart is basing here. So uh, with the failed zigzag pattern, what do you expect to happen? You come right down to the beginning of the A wave. And this is where that A wave would have started before it was nullified by that 78.6% correction. So what do we do? We come right back there and we regroup and we start over. That is classic Elliott wave uh, technical uh, workings. And what I see here is this gap right there at the 160 level. Boy, wouldn't it be nice 
if we could get this to come down and fill that gap after all that sideways support being built around 170 we break that out scare the heck out of everybody come down test that 160 level fill the gap that could be an incredible entry to the upside on BABA but we're gonna wait and see things don't always work as perfect as we would like them to in the markets in fact they rarely set up absolutely perfectly but uh, that would be an ideal scenario to get that little gap filled right there and then be able to put that position on uh, long for the near future so um, please uh, tune in for next week's report because obviously these next couple of days are going to tell us an awful lot on where the next major move comes in the markets do we head lower or do we rebound and move back to the upside hope you've had a wonderful week and we'll be back to talk to you again next week take care everybody